All right, down the mean river, Bergmont access, and uh, it's looking pretty good today. Boat's unloaded. Check. Let's go ahead and get the. Oh, there's also life jacket. Today I got brand new. Not brand new. Yeah, I got me a new kayak paddle. So I'm borrowing today. That last one I got. I've been using so I borrowed. It's uh it's some it's itty bitty and it's definitely not high performance. Alright. Bergmont. Park over here I guess. Park wherever you like. So yesterday I went yeah yesterday I went up the Lamine, back down roughly 12 miles, so it wasn't the full course. Today I'm going to do the full course and then some more, probably a couple more miles up river. I'm going to try to make it to uh, past Harmet Access, or I don't even know what the name of it is. It doesn't matter, there's another access point. I'm going to try to make it to that today, we'll see what happens. Let's get it started. Yeah, it sure does look pretty out here today. The sun is bright. It's 52 degrees. Water's about 50 degrees, so it's still gonna be about a month away before I'm just not wearing my wet suit, my dry suit. Getting used to these pants, dry dry suit. It's amazing how much you don't pay attention to it on the road on the river. I don't even mind the booties. <sighs> Say that. <sighs> yeah, so I got the NRS Extreme. Dry suit, I think that's what this one's called. And then uh inner us water booties. Uh, yeah, it feels pretty comfortable. Yesterday it was so cold I came back when it was dark. My hands were freezing. I got my gloves. I just haven't really wanted to use them. Pretty, they're decent. They're NRS too. They're pretty badass though. I mean, pay good money for them. Might as well use them, right? I'll just keep them stored in my side pocket. Getting pretty used to getting outfitted. It's almost too fast, kind of makes me feel like maybe I'm missing something or doing something wrong. 
not. Feels like it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, compared to walking, it's a diff totally different type of exercise, but one thing I don't do on the river is listen to music or audiobooks, podcasts. I just, uh, feel like that's a luxury I can't afford right now in my practicing. This deck pod is pretty, pretty good little device. I haven't really found any, one thing I wish, I guess I wish it was a little bit bigger. It works though. Then today we'll do some chatting, some introspection, and then I'm gonna do some 4K of the Lamine River itself. Definitely contemplating a new life jacket. So watch keys, and then on my other side. I've got my, I got my whistle, and I got my little glow stick. Mm-hmm. Twelve twenty-four. Thank you, daylight savings time. All right, so I've been using these little like I don't know, like flat bladed uh, paddles, European paddle. Obviously, you saw it probably in the last video or so. <laughs> and it just wasn't giving me the performance that I needed. And I could tell that the paddle just wasn't very good. And so I asked the buddy, I'm gonna borrow your paddle. He says, You can borrow my paddle. You just got to bring it back, right? So, all I can say is, I can tell within this first hundred paddles, it's a world of difference. Like, oh yeah, God, my gosh, world of difference. It's less splash. I'm getting more grip. I just had a better pull. Now, one of the things I was having problems especially in this new boat was, I just kept going to the left. And when I say left, I don't mean like, oh, he's drifting. I meant like, I was damn near going in circles. Could not figure out what was going on. And then I realized the way I sit in my car is the way I was sitting in the kayak. So it was never truly balanced. I caught on after I don't know the last one where I really had a lot of pain well you know from working out and uh, I decided to sit in my car and I realized I always had like a canter and so dawned on me I was probably not sitting properly in the kayak think that'd be obvious but I thought it was my paddling was more of the issue and uh no I was just sitting wrong oh yeah this paddle's way better I was gonna bring my Greenland paddle it's not quite finished yet technically it probably would have been okay but one of the things I've been wanting to do is get a good speed rating 
on this course with a good Euro blade and then see how well I do the green loop. Now something I haven't mentioned, I don't think. So when I first tried the kayak out, Finger Lakes, I put a uh I did not wear my wetsuit, my dry suit. People were kayaking, not wearing dry suits or wetsuits. I thought I'll just do it. But I did bring my uh what do you call that? My spray skirt. And it worked all right. I definitely, it's the kind that just like, uh, has a drawstring around your waist or your chest. It's not nearly as uh, efficient, falls down. Definitely need the suspender style. Anyways, when I'm wearing dry suit I don't need this bracelet it's kind of liberating and in fact I don't think I'm ever gonna I don't know how often I think the spray skirt I might you wear for like when it's raining pull it out on the race or something but as far as wearing it all the time it doesn't seem necessary now in Missouri we get crazy storms that come and go in a moment's notice. Can, so it'll be a 90 degree day, clear skies, four o'clock rolls around, five o'clock rolls around. You might get 30 minutes of a thunderstorm, crazy, crazy storm pass through, and then it's over. Back to where you were. Now on the river, you're gonna get wet. You're not gonna fill your kayak, you're right? You call it, you know, sink or anything, but you have a bilge pump just in case. I'm thinking that these, maybe a dry top. The nice thing about dry tops, number one, they're made for kayaking, whereas a raincoat isn't, so seams and fit all that comes into play comfortability when it's a dry suit you know you're gonna stay dry so i'm contemplating that that seems like a bit overkill but it keeps you warm last night i made the mistake of i went late i got on the water at 4:30. I paddled till 6.30 and it was, temperature was dropping, it's like 48 degrees outside, it already dropped like 4 or 5 degrees. By the time I got back, my hands were so cold, I mean they were, yeah, I th they were really cold, I felt like I'd been outside in the winter. and so. That part kind of stunk, but I also didn't have the drip rings on here, which I can already tell with these. It's, this, this, this paddle is so much nicer. Oh gosh, can't even tell you the difference. You wouldn't think, yeah you would I guess, but you might, you experienced kayakers, you, for us novices, not knowing what you got, what you don't got, what you have, and what you could have, a bunch of different gets a lot of big gaps. I can already tell I'm going way faster with this one. I bet I get at least a mile an hour faster. Anyways, yesterday, it was nice to be on the Lamine as it was getting dark. It feels like a fairly safe river to do it after dark, daytime. Quite all right, but you don't need the lights on your boats and all that stuff. I still need to get. It's 
still working on my stroke. It's not very good. I'm really trying to engage that core. So anyways. Oh boy, I got a boater. Woo! John Boat's gonna go around me. I don't know which way he's going. On my left. Just like you're supposed to. Kids hanging out going fishing. Low waves, we got waves. Woo! Love waves. <sighs> <laughs> oh, speaking of waves, before I get too much further, I need to clamp this thing down. Let's... That's kind of fun. That turned up. Okay, ruining my time. Whoa, get the touchy there. <laughs> Now, one interesting thing about being alone on the river and trying to work out is trying to keep time, how fast to paddle. When you're competing against yourself, it's a really rough race. You're not going, probably not going pressing as hard as you can. as long as you can. And then you can tend to get distracted by things like camera gear, saying things. But it sure does make it a little more interesting. Lamine, mean Lamine is, the race is like 13 and a half miles. And I forgot to see how long the race. I want to say you have, starts at 10, food served at 1230. So they expect you to get back in two and a half hours is what I'm guessing. Right now, it's about my time with that crappy old paddle. And I haven't even brought my Greenland paddle out here yet to test the lamine. So, again, that's why I'm doing the Euroblade test. Now, it's interesting, yesterday, it was, I said this, air temperature was the low 50s, and I did not sweat nearly as much as I expected that I did last Sunday when I was on the river. I mean, I guess it was the Missouri. I was completely drenched inside. I mean, last time I was pretty, yeah, actually I was pretty, pretty wet. Because last time, not so much. Definitely a little dehydrated. So speaking of which, try to get ahead of that curve. Hmm. You know, I think about my kayak setup <clears throat> for 
the 340 and right now that's the thing about two hours you uh you know two hour sprints not eating unless you just want to got to drink water obviously but carrying 120 ounces it's almost a gallon of water now I almost feel like I don't know I don't know if I even want to bring that much on this race like this deck pod seems pretty sufficient I mean I could see having some niceties exchanging out, like maybe handkerchiefs or you know, claws to keep you cool on the back of your neck or something, or getting refills, I guess. I don't know. I just can't imagine wanting to eat that much during a race, but I know you got it's, it's an all day race, so I'm guessing. Probably apples, grapes, bananas, fruit while I'm paddling. My digestive system isn't gonna. I can eat bars off kayaking, peanuts, but I have simple sugars. I also got the, uh, well, I mean, fruits aren't simple sugars, but simple sugars on top of that. Now, I heard somebody mention, I gotta check it out, like, noon hydration tablets that contain, like, electrolytes that you need. You just drop them in your bladder, water bladder, and just drink it. It seems really complicated, like, you know, you figure if you always have salt in your water, why do you gotta have a uh, two water systems? That always seems kind of strange to me. Like one percent of all your drinks should be salt, and I shouldn't really need to keep adding more salt. But I'm not a food scientist. Just going off things that seem to make sense, and so. I love this. I keep doubting myself every time. I'm like, man, you gotta get in that water and paddle. Even today, before I got out of the car, I was like, I gotta go paddle. You know what? There's a stupid way of thinking. So I should have said, heck yeah, I get the paddle, boys and gals, people. I get the paddle. Uh, uh, paddle. So anyway, having fun on the lamine. Lamine, as somebody said. Kind of funny. Missouri has the strange history of originally being French, right? That's the Louisiana Purchase. And so they got here and they bastardized Native American names. And then English settlers, obviously. America's made their way west, and then they bastardized the language even more. So things like, I don't know, I'm not saying laminated, lamine, that's how you say it in French, but it goes from that to lamine. Yet, oxvazi instead of avaz, you got Versailles instead of Versailles. Why does that sound Italian, Versailles? Who Versailles? I don't know. Versailles. I don't know why I think that's Italian. Doesn't matter. So. Well, a dramatic difference. I'm really curious what my time's gonna be like today. I'd just be glad I get to go up this river. That's another thing about 
races. Let's say races. They're like trying to do timed horses. Is that the... When you aren't familiar with the land or the river, it's really far hard to know how far you've been, how much more you got to go. Is it one more bend, two more bends? And so you just get stuck in this, I mean, which is good. This thing is paddle. When I mean, you don't know, paddle. It's not like you're gonna get lost. Just paddle. Just keep going. Paddle. Paddle. Yeah, I enjoy doing what I mean so far. I got to get brave enough to do the Missouri. Missouri's slow enough now that I feel like, I don't know, I sometimes think being low might be harder because the way I've seen it done is that you, to go up the Missouri River, you use the eddies coming off the wing dikes because they create enough, if you've seen any of my videos, see where they, uh, so the river goes up, up river behind those eddies. <laughs> now, the eddies are loaded with silt behind those wing dikes. So, the river's low, you don't really get that full benefit because silt sandbars are all exposed so you don't get as much water behind them giving you that drive so that's partly why I've been hesitant to go up the Missouri River now I could go to Franklin Island and do that try to go up see what happens and then I've also contemplated taking Lamine to the Missouri and then trying to go up. That seems like an amazing, amazingly hard workout. Now, one thing I don't like, uh, let's see here, I don't think that's, I guess I don't like it. Right now, no boat ramp in Rocheport, you're, you just held to the standards of the river and it's almost it's so muddy because it's the big muddy uh -huh. um, banks are so muddy you can't really get out safe and so my uh, really original training plan was just to paddle up the river from Rocheport I could do that any day any time any morning any evening any time of day and then that would be phenomenal, great way of training. I could actually, if I could paddle up nine miles to Franklin Island, whoa, then you know you're cooking. I'm guessing it would take two hours. But if I can make it two hours up to Franklin Island from Rocheport, that's doing freaking good. I don't even know of anybody that's done it. I mean, going up river a little while for a, an hour paddle or so is one thing, but I've never seen anyone. I've never heard of anyone paddling to Franklin Island. That's a massive workout. It's like two and a half miles an hour of river going against you. And you trying to paddle, you really need to paddle like you're paddling five. And if that's the case, Two and a half miles, it'd take you almost three and a half miles, three and a half hours to make it to Franklin Island. <sighs> Nature's gym. Oh yeah. Loving those paddles. Oh my god. There's such a difference. It's just less splashing. I wish I could take some cooler shots, but I'm kind of limited. I'm still trying to work out here, but 
appreciate y'all listening to me. I think I'm going to sign off for a little bit. I'm going to take some forward shots of I mean, I totally understand why people get two cameras. It's pretty nice just to set it and forget it. I don't really have to worry about anything. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Corrupted Oh, you see that splash? Yesterday. Yesterday, the uh, these carp, this invasive species, I forget what they're called. Everybody calls them Asian carp here. I know that's not the correct term. I don't know what kind. They're trying to call them now by their species. So we can, people differentiate them. But they hit the top of the surface all the time. And these are big fish. These aren't little fish. These are at least two pound fish from bigger skimming the water and uh huh, it once skimmed and hit the under skimmed across the top like a rock and then hit the underside of my boat and then i've had another one uh, last year that jumped over the bow of my boat my kayak so they are out here you will see them you will hear them and there's a good chance you'll get smacked by them. All right. I think I'm just going to record forward facing for a while. You all have a great afternoon or day.
Made it to 70. Uh, really want to know what my time is. Let's just take a peek. 6.83 miles. 4.3 miles an hour average run time. It's taking me an hour and a half to get here. Well, thanks for coming along for the ride. I still have to go six and a half, six point eight three miles down. And uh gotta hydrate. I am so thirsty. Wow. It's a lot different today. I'm just sitting under 70, Highway 70. All right, well everybody, take care of yourself. Get your paddle wet. Whoa. See those trucks overhead? If they're in the passing lane, you can see them. <laughs> oh. Feels like I'm being pushed by the wind a little bit. I think I'm definitely going to start at this access point. I want to say it's Harmon. Harmon access point. The river already looks more interesting. I mean, it's fine going the other way, but I've already saw some bluffs. I'm seeing some rocks. It looks like it gets a little bit narrower. The uh, current probably picks up a little bit. Yeah, the top surface is moving. Look at this gnarly group of trees. <sighs> Isn't that crazy looking? I mean, that's what happens when it floods, when the river comes up. All right, well, anyways, I got a long paddle home. Y'all take care of yourselves and get your paddle wet. <laughs>